Hello, welcome to this week's video, which is about regaining control and some taking some power back when faced with either narcissistic abuse or some form of manipulation where you are feeling completely out of control. Does any of the following sound familiar to you? They have all the power, they keep persecuting me, they have uh, managed to ostracize me from my friends, they've turned family members against me, I don't know what to do, um, for perhaps I'm unable to see the children, I have no contact with the children's school, they've blocked me on everything, they stop me at every step of the way, they don't communicate properly, um, and this is extremely unfair and I am feeling down, depressed, I'm full of anxiety and I have no idea what to do. If this sounds like you, chances are you are on the receiving end of some pretty hefty manipulation and control techniques which are being used in order to keep you down and that's exactly what they're doing if you find yourself saying these kind of things, it's working. They are being able to erode you, control you, push you down. They are making you feel bad. So on the surface, it looks like you have no power, no control. It looks like they hold all the cards. They have all the keys to the places you need to get to in order to move your life forward. Chances are they don't. Slight disclaimer before I continue on with this video where I'm going to explain how you can help yourself in this situation. Always gauge the situation, think about what you are going to do next carefully and what the implications are of it might be in order uh, for you to assess whether or not it's going to put you in actual imminent danger. Physical danger, physical abuse is something quite different. My advice there would be to get out as soon as possible, go to the authorities, get to some safety. The same with this kind of stuff, um, <clears throat> it's very, Say, for instance, with therapists, it's very uh, easy to kind of try to rescue someone, make things safe, highlight the problem, highlight the issue, highlight the abuse to your authorities. Sometimes it can make things a lot worse, especially when it, uh, children are involved. So before you do certain things, um, think about them carefully and, as I said, the consequences of them and how you, if you can handle those consequences. This video, however, is mostly gonna be focused on changing the rhetoric, the narrative that's going on within your head. That is the first step to regaining some kind of control, some kind of power, on an, uh, some kind of equilibrium within the situation. So, a lot of us can find ourselves in this situation, and it's quite common during divorce or separation. Um, it can happen within family dynamics, especially if somebody who was kind of acting as a um, kind of peacekeeper it, it dies, and then the whole family can begin to disintegrate, squabble, argue, and certain things that are not particularly nice can happen. These are some kind of scenarios. I'm going to use these as examples to help you understand what to do. So for instance, let's uh, use the example of divorce and separation where there are children involved. Sometimes the residing parent can actively, not block, but hinder the progress of the non-resident parent by not giving over, let's say, uh, school reports, information on medical uh, stuff, where their children might be based medically, dentistry, things like this, things happening in the kids' lives. Sometimes the kids don't communicate quite so much and that is because they're also having to deal with said parent and this situation and sometimes it's easier for children just to be silent, just to be quiet and communicate minimally. Remember, sometimes in the case of children, the focus will be on the parent who doesn't give love. The focus will be on the parent who can reject really easy. That's where the attention goes. If you are the parent who is loving and giving and emotionally available, they don't have to fight for your attention. This can often feel quite unfair because the attention will go to the kind of more ambivalent, ambiguous parent. And again, this is about changing the rhetoric in your head. It's about understanding this dynamic and understanding where the children are at. And again, this can begin to bring up the level of uh, equilibrium and power and control within a situation. Your children may not be talking to you so much because they don't need to fight for your attention. They may be trying to survive in the environment that they are currently within, which is best to 
almost pretend that you don't exist. There are certain things you can do with regards to exterior stuff. So you can go and seek legal help. You are perfectly entitled to do that. Often with control and manipulation, the, the point of it is, is to depower you is to make you useless, is to make you feel you have no options, you have no choice, there is no one who can help you. When you start to realize there is, you can go to the authorities, you can go directly to, for instance, schools, medical centers, make yourself known as the parent, get them to communicate directly with you about certain stuff, bypass the other, the other parent, bypass the other person. This is extremely easy to do in, and these um, institutions and authorities will do this. They're very well aware of these situations and what can happen between people. How you then begin to deal with communication is on uh, a whole different set of kind of um, tips and tricks, if you like. First of all, you don't have to answer every message and every email, every contact. You don't have to justify yourself and you don't have to actually give a response. And ultimately, you don't even have to read it. So there is a block button. There are blocks you can use on emails. Yes, if people are close, if there's family members involved, they will find a way to get in, sometimes innocently, kind of just mentioning something and it can set you off on a trigger. The point is what the manipulator is doing, what the controller is doing, they are able to make you react. They know your triggers. And in the words of Gabor Mate, if you are triggered, then you are the one carrying the ammunition. You are the loaded gun. Once you analyze the ammunition, realize what it is, you can defuse the situation really quick. And the next time someone tries to trigger you, which is a control mechanism, There'll just be a click, there's no reaction. So first thing you can do when there are correspondences, when there's contact that happens, you can take a step back, take that 15 minute gap. I did a video on that as well, I'll try and put it up here. Take that 15 minute space, pace up and down, punch a bag, go for a walk, do something like that, distract yourself for 15 minutes. If you need to do it again, do it for another 15 minutes. Get the emotion out of the situation. Get that instant reaction of, I've just been served an injustice. I've just been accused of something which is not true. I've just been told more lies. I've just been pushed down again. I need to react. I need to defend myself. I need to show that this is an injustice. Take all of that away because that is exactly what the manipulator and the controller is playing on. They're playing on your need to defend yourself. That's how they get you running around in circles. So they trigger, trigger, trigger. What they're also doing highly likely is projecting their insecurities. This is quite common and it's not necessarily uh, reserved for romantic relationships. This can happen within families as well. They may feel guilt for the way they treated you. They may feel guilt for some of, your, for some of their betrayals against you, some of their transgressions against you. They may feel insecure, inferior around you. They may feel like a bad person. They may feel like everybody is watching them and they have to make the right moves. So they'll do the right moves in front of certain people, but there will be those jabs in there. There will be those barbs. You will see them acting nicely, drawing people in, and it will feel unfair, and it will feel injust, uh, like an injustice. And that's those feelings are the ones you have to combat. You have to express them, express them somewhere safely. Build yourself a network, and not a network of people who are taking the side or believing the narrative of the other person without consideration to your version of events. If you find, and this can happen, friends, family are just kind of going with what the other person is saying without consulting you, without kind of finding out what's going on for you. These are not people you want on your inner circle. It's time to be ruthless, put them at arm's length. Again, think of damage limitation. If I cut them out completely, there's gonna be a backlash. I don't wanna deal with a backlash. I can't deal with the backlash. So I'm gonna just distance myself slowly put them out to the outside of my circle. I don't need to engage in them. I don't need to respond to their messages. They're probably not sending you any messages other than abusive ones or accusatory ones. These are some of the techniques you can use which help to change the narrative in your head. You are no longer powerless. You can gain some control. You can get direct links to certain, like I said, bodies, institutions, a network of people who are there for you, non-judgmental, supportive. Maybe they'll pull you up and say, hey, you know what, you're reacting again. You're, you're, you're justifying yourself. You don't need to do this. Why do you keep responding? They may pull you up on that. That's a good friend. 
That's someone who's going, hey, I, I understand what you're going through. I think you're making some of the wrong moves. I think you may need to step back. You don't need to justify yourself. You don't need to react. There's another tip here which you can utilize, which is the manipulator and, or the controller the persecutor, if you like, the person acting malevolently with maliciousness, etc., etc. They will have a script that they follow. They will become quite predictable in what they do. They're not going to tell you about this. You know that. They're not going to do that. You know that. They're not going to drop the kids off with sufficient amount of clothes. You know that. They're not going to tell you about school events. You know that. They're going to be communicating with a family member and you know that that family member is going to believe everything they say or that friend is going to believe everything you say. Now you begin to build up a picture of the world around you. Now you can make some decisions. Now you have some power. Now you have some control. You are able to understand and predict exactly what it is that this person is going to do. Therefore, you can arm yourself against it. Therefore, you can say, I know what's going to come through that message, that contact, that email, I know what's going to happen here next. So I just avoid it. Or I will go bypass them and go direct to source. Like for instance, if it's school, doctors, hospital, I don't need them in order to, or if you're selling a house, I don't need to go to them to then get to the real estate agent. I can go straight to the real estate agent. My name's on the deeds. Why do I need to contact them? The real estate agent can talk to them. The lawyer can talk to them. There are ways around all of this, but because, as I said, the manipulation is, and the control is to put you down, is to depower you, they will do everything they can. It will be lies, injustices, accusations. Look at the way you're behaving. There'll be tons of projection in there. They'll be feeling insecure, inf inferior, as I've said. They will project that onto you. Look how, look how shit your life is. Look how insecure you are. Look at how you treat the children. Look at what you did. Oh, you didn't even take them for, to a restaurant, you know. You just walked them in the park. I mean, they will use anything, which for other people is like, well, we took the kids in the park. It's natural. It's nature where they played in the trees. Oh, how, how could you? They were playing with a stick. They could have had an accident. All of that stuff. You can begin to counteract this in your head. You can begin to not answer it. Give yourself that space to heal, come forward, grow, gain some strength. And this is by stepping out of the situation. Take that helicopter view, take that objective stance. And another way to be able to handle it would be to act literally like a lawyer. If you have, uh, and, and uh, I don't know if any of you are into business, but if you're in business and you have, say for instance, an upset client, an upset customer, the best way to deal with that is to become objective, just as a lawyer would do. The same was in, within divorce proceedings or custody battles and things like that. Become objective, take the emotion out of it, take the conjecture out of it, express it somewhere else where you can let it out and that, and that person will hear it and they'll have empathy for you and they'll go through it with you. But when it comes to certain direct communications that you have to respond to, take that step back, take the emotion out of the injustice, take the emotion out of the lies, take the emotion out of the accusations, do not react straight away, take that 15 minutes, come back and give pure facts, objective, something that can't be disproved, something that, you know, I don't know, whatever it might be, you know, like, yes, on this day, this, this happened and this occurred and then that happened. And say no more, ask no questions, don't ask them why they're doing it. You know why they're doing it, because they don't want you to feel good. It's that simple. It's not a br brilliant answer, but it's the way it is. And eventually that answer to that question won't matter to you. You will become indifferent, but this is about training your mind to not react, training your mind to see around the manipulation, because manipulation is, a lot of it is about clouding someone else's judgment, about giving them fog, about making darkness and gloom so they don't quite understand what's going on. They can't quite see what's going on. But this becomes quite predictable behavior because they see that it's working. And then you can begin to counter it. When you no longer react in the way that was predictable, their predictable manipulation is going to start to crumble, but they don't have a backup system. They'll start to develop one. And again, if you stay on the course, you, if you stay the course, the backup system that they develop won't work either. Like, as I said, you begin to empower yourself. You begin to climb out of this kind of crumbled, you know, fetal position, uh, kind of, they have all the cards, they have all the power, they've destroyed my life, they've destroyed my connection to so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so. 
etc etc they're making this very difficult you begin to by changing the mindset by putting some of these tools in place you are able to change that entire situation and quietly bring yourself to a, a higher level of control power and equilibrium within this dynamic until this dynamic eventually burns itself out which they always do through silence and no connection eventually when all is said and done done and dusted property sold kids have grown up family no longer you no longer have anything to do with them etc etc so i hope this video gives you some insights if you are going through something like this i hope you find it helpful and until the next time please take very good care of yourselves